Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Crusader Kings 2. Now, if you've watched the Donald Trump episode, you uh, will know what happened. If you haven't, go and give it a watch. Long story short, I'm going to be starting another series while I take a break from that series for some time. And I decided, well, let's start as an already established character somewhere. So before I started this episode, I used this randomize button to find a random count somewhere. And the count I've ended up is this guy, Count Adelbart of Schwersh. Schwerz. Schwersh. Schwerz. <laughs> if you thought I was uh, bad at Scottish names, you'll be delighted to know I'll be bad at French and German names as well. So we are the county of Schwersch, we are a vassal of Alemannia, and we are Count Adelbart. Difficulty is quite hard, so this could also end up being a short series. So yeah, let's uh, jump in. I'm starting in the early Middle Ages bookmark, 769. Let's have a read. The early Middle Ages started with the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the early 5th century. The earlier part of this era saw the great Germanic and Slavic migrations across Europe, with people such as the Goths and Lombards settling in southern Europe, the Franks settling in, settling in Gaul, and Saxons crossing the sea and settling in Britain. The Eastern Roman Empire was violently shaken by pressure from the Goths and Avars, and fought bitterly with the ancient Persian enemy. The rise of Islam saw the Arabs conquering immense amounts of territory in the Middle East and North Africa. And in India, several great dynasties vied for dominance, with the, Rash with the Rashtrakutas rising towards the end of the 8th century. In the steppes, the Khazars grew in power, and in Scandinavia, things were about to change in a way that was to affect the entire continent. Vikings, my friend. Vikings. First jump in and have a look at who this guy is. Uh, everything here will be the same, the only thing I will change is... Uh, Charlemagne, no, where is he? Charlemagne story events, yes. Charlemagne, who's in charge of France here at the moment, has scripted story events that kick in, that gives him his sort of historical sort of path. I'm going to turn those off because uh, I want to see what he does on his own. And let's go. Again, the first episode will be a little slow, because I have to, like, get used to who this new guy is. His court, his vassals, what needs to be done, basically. Here we are. We already saw this screen before. We are playing a German Catholic from a feudal system. We are playing a German Catholic Count. Here we are. Schwersch. We are part of the De Jure Kingdom of Burgundy, which if I go to De Jure Kingdoms, yes, we are part of Burgundy, and I believe we are also, where, where are we, I've lost our county now, there it is, we're also part of the De Jure uh, Duchy of Upper Burgundy, something? I don't know. But at the moment we're part of Middle Francia, which is owned by King Carloman of Middle Francia, the brother of King Karl of West Francia, otherwise known as Charlemagne. So here's Charlemagne, he's got a really good marshal, he's zealous, and he's diligent, and he's a brilliant strategist. And he starts off with claims on Middle Francia, and a strong claim on the Empire of Francia, so I get the feeling that he's going to unite these two realms somehow. His mother is very good at intrigue. I think in reality his mother ends up murdering his brother and he takes West Francia. Middle Francia. I haven't I've never played a story event on, so I don't really know for sure, but I believe that that's what happens. Let's have a look at Count Adalbert himself. We suck at diplomacy, we're pretty good at fighting, we're 
pretty good at stewardship, we also suck at intrigue, and, we, and we're not very good at learning things. And we have one son, who's born of no mother. Interesting. We are zealous, so we aren't going to tolerate those Lombards. That's so, that, you know, dealt a blow to Donald Trump up here. We're gregarious, which means we're socially competent. Are you sure? So this trait actually gives us plus two diplomacy. So without this trait, we'd have minus one diplomacy. We're deceitful. Really? Okay. And we're stubborn, so that lowers our diplomacy. And we're a thrifty clerk, which increases our stewardship, lowers our diplomacy, and increases our fertility. How does being a, cl a good administrator increase your fertility? I'm confused at all the stuff that increases your fertility. Aye, aye, aye. So we have no wife, so that's the first thing we'll have to rectify. Yep, we are unmarried. We we'll have to pick an ambition. The first one is obviously going to be get married. Pick a character focus. Uh, I think we want to grow our family, so I think the first character focus is probably going to be. Let's see. If I choose family, it'll increase fertility, increase health. If I choose this, it'll increase intrigue. Do I want diplomacy or intrigue? I probably want diplomacy. No, we're not lustful. We are zealous, so seduction. No, no, no. Family. There we are. We have idle council members who aren't doing anything. Let's have a look at our council. Are they the best? Are they the best? I believe they are the best. Our chancellor has pretty good intrigue. He'd be better as a spy master. But I think he's the only one with a high enough diplomacy score to be our chancellor. So he has an intrigue of 17, and our spy master has an intrigue of 15. So that's not much of a difference. So we can handle that. So he is our mayor, Baron Wigerich of Altdorf, which I believe, if we look in our county, I've lost it again. Where is our county? It's so small. Oh. So yeah, this is our county. Uh, we do not have many troops at all. We have a castle of Schwartz itself. We have a city of Zurich. Oh, Zurich is over here. Okay, so we're Swiss. Well, Switzerland doesn't exist at the moment. And the barony of Altdorf and the bishopric. So our mayor is in charge of that city. We have another mayor, Mayor Emic of Zurich. He's in charge of the first city and he is really good at fighting. We have a steward, Heinrich. He's not that good. Our spy master is Morel. He is 50. He's not 15 years old, he has a skill of 15, but he doesn't like us. Why does he not like us? Ah, I see. He has the envious trait, which means he craves our power, and that makes him not like us as much. And our corp chaplain is pretty okay, like this. So I have to change this spy master, because I, I, don't, I don't want him not liking me. So we'll have to deal with that. As for laws, we are gavel kind, which means, as I said before, our chil our titles will be divided among our children. Our oldest child won't inherit everything. And we can actually shift to elective monarchy, which I think is what I'm going to do. Not just yet, we only have one province, we don't have to do it now. Uh, the crown laws of the kingdom of Middle France here apply in the county of Schwartz. Uh, feudal levies normal. No feudal taxation, because we don't have any feudal vassals. City levies, city taxes, normal churches, yes. No tribal taxation, because we don't have any tribes. We are under this guy. He's our liege lord. He's Duke Hanabi of Alemannia. The duchy of Alemannia is this duchy over here. It's a pretty big duchy. Especially compared to the Duchy of Marais that we saw up here. Let's have a look. Duke Hanabi of Alemannia. He doesn't like us as well. He doesn't like us because we are deceitful. And he is honest. So if you look here, 
Honest versus deceitful, minus five. He doesn't like us because those two traits, you know, conflict. He's an honest person, he's lazy, slothful, he has a hot temper, he's rough, but he's also charitable. And he's a brilliant strategist, he's a battlefield terrain master. Well, well, this guy is pretty good. He owns the county of Fustenberg. He also owns the county of Alm. He also owns the county of Schwaben. And he also owns a duchy, so he owns these three counties, so he's pretty powerful. 1,000 troops. Compared to our 338. Yeah, that's not that good, is it? So let's set our council doing stuff. The marshal can train troops, increase our number of troops. Collect taxes. This will give us more tax, but uh, he is more likely to get attacked by uh, peasants than collect the actual taxes. So I can have him research some economy tech. You, I have to deal with you somehow. Uh, what honorary title can I give you? You can be Master of the Hunt. And you can... I'll find a way to make you like me. And for now, you can scheme to make sure no one else is uh, after me. And I'll send send you to Rob Technology later on. Uh, do we have any religious problems? Nope, we're pretty Catholic. So, you can just... Uh... Let's see. Ah, now I can use the court chaplain to improve religious relations in my own county. I think before, when I couldn't, it was some sort of bug that's been patched recently. So, let's have a look at our vassals then. So this Emic von Gutzenberg, the mayor of Zurich, as you can see, he's paying us 4.8 gold in tax because he likes us. Wiggerich von Altdorf, Baron of Altdorf, is paying us nothing. And that, I believe, is because baronies seem to be feudal vassals. Correct, because barons live in castles, mayors live in cities, and bishops live in churches. So we do have a feudal vassal here. Interesting. Well, he's not paying us any tax, we're gonna have to deal with that somehow, and I know quite no know how. We also have Egan Nolf von Waldeck, he's the Bishop of Engelberg. He's not paying us any tax because he likes the Pope more than he likes... Why is he not paying us any tax? This shows us that he likes us more than the Pope. Why is he not paying us tax? He should be. Odd. Anyway, let's sort out this Baron. He's not paying us any tax. Let's go to Laws. Let's go to Realm. No obligations. Feudal taxation. Currently on none. Feudal Lords are exempted from taxation. I'm going to set it to small, because uh, that will lower opinion, feudal vassal opinions of us by t minus 10, and I don't want to annoy the, you know, the Baron too much. So. Small will do for now. The Lords of Schwartz have approved the institution of the small feudal tax law. There we are. So he's now paying us tax. Not that much, but it's still tax. I could have probably set it to, you know, to medium or large. But never mind, I'll do for now. Slow and steady, eh? So I think we're all set. You can improve his relations there. Maybe make the bishop like us. And you can make our liege like us more. Council set. Laws have gone past. Technology! As you can see, unlike in 1066, we are in 769, so technology is pretty bad. We don't have very good tolerance, we don't have very good majesty, we don't have very good light infantry, heaven infantry, etc, etc. And we're not gaining any technology, so... Yeah. We'll have to deal with that. But, uh... I'll see you guys in the next episode for that.
where we will find a wife again. See you soon.